Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da I hope it's a fillah continuing on in our study of this treatise of Sheikh Bender Al-Utaybi Hafadhullahu Ta'ala Afwan Sheikh Badr Al-Utaybi Hafidhullahu Ta'ala Have mercy upon Salafiyah And we were speaking about In the very beginning of the treaties Where the Sheikh referred to The Na'ma Of Following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And that That ni'mah that some of the people have been blessed with, that some of the people they lose that ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that they become misguided and they are led astray. And so this is the challenge. This is the challenge for us all and why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas with the bat ala sunnah firmness upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Let's see if we can find a way to cross this river safely bi'idhnillah ta'ala and so as we mentioned an important qa'idah of fiqh that the scholars mention Al-Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat So the Shaykh mentions Hafidhullah Ta'ala that there are those they consider their actions to be from Salafiyya whereas in reality their actions are far from Salafiyya. Whoever Allah the Most High honors with Salafiyya in the Minhaj al Ahl Sunnah, it is upon him to strive to be upright and firm upon the methodology of the righteous Salaf. In all of his statements, actions, and situations by which he worships Allah the Most High. So that's what Salafiyya is about, Ibadah. And the sooner that you learn this, that Salafiyya is not about just calling to a clique and saying Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so or claiming names that for yourselves and your followers that don't go to Dalil that la yastinid illa Dalil that they have no relationship to evidence from the Qur'an or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam The Shaykh then says, this is the istiqama which is linked to Iman. As Allah the Most High said, indeed those who say our Lord is Allah and then remain firm, the angels will descend upon them saying, do not fear and do not grieve, but receive good tidings of paradise which you were promised. Also, Muslim narrated in his Sahih upon the authority of Sufyan ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, say something to be about Islam so I do not need to ask anybody after you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Say, I have Iman in Allah and reign firm thereupon. So look, if we look at the simplicity, in fact, of Salafiyya, so many people that they make the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah much more difficult than it is much more complex. They demand so much more from the new Muslim and from the one who's new to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. The people demand that, hey, you need to know about the position of so-and-so. Did you see our series of Rudud on so-and-so? Oh, we heard you listening to so-and-so. And they put this upon the new Muslim and the person who's new to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. And they confuse the people. And the pe people become, they, they're lost. They don't know which way to turn. 
They don't know whether the sunnah is to the yameen or yasar. They don't know if it's to the left or the right. Because of confusion and busying them with things that are not going to bring them closer to Allah. Qul amantu billah thummastaqam. As the Prophet ﷺ. Say you believe in Allah, then walk, then be straight. So, ittaqallah uh, mistada'atum. Fear Allah as much as you can. If you fear Allah truly, as much as you can, you will have success. I say that, but your Prophet Muhammad said that. Qul amantu billah, thum istaqam. Say, I believe in Allah, then be straight. So be straight on the sunnah. Don't you believe, don't you believe and don't you have firmness that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you? And that you're not going to be tested and asked about this one? What's your position on so-and-so? Did Tahir Wyatt say this? Did Muhammad Mufti say this? Did Abdul, uh, Abu Khadija say this? Did this one say this? This one read, read it this one? You're not going to be asked about that. So fear Allah as much as you can and do not let people confuse you. When they bring confusion to you, run. Run from them because they're more than likely people of fitan and confusion, not people of istiqamah who want to guide, help you be guided and help you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh then mentions about that hadith, Qul amantu billah thumma istiqam, say that I, that have iman billah, or say that, that you believe in Allah and then be straight, or be upright, or be righteous. He says, so mere iman is not sufficient unless a person remains upright and firm upon its milestones and symbolic acts of worship. Similarly, a person merely ascribing to Salafi is not sufficient unless a person is upright upon the way of the righteous Salaf and every principle which differentiates them from the people of innovation and desires. That, that's a, a very significant point that I have to stop at. That when you walk straight and be upright and you claim Salafiyya, that you will not emulate the people of Bid'ah. And there are those people who say I'm Salafi and who say our group is Salafi, our website is Salafi, our forum is Salafi, our masjid is Salafi, we're the only Salafis in this locality. They claim these things, but you don't see straightness from them. And they claim these things and you do not see that they are adhering to the principles of Salafiyya. You see that they say, no, you must follow Sheikh so-and-so because he's the Imam in this era of such and such. You must blindly follow so-and-so. He refuted Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali. You must fall into line or we're going to refute you. And all kind of other principles, they make principles in Kawa'id, which are not principles that you find from the Salaf. And you and I will not know that because we are not blessed with that kind of fiqh fi deen until we go out and seek knowledge of the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa so we can distinguish between haq and batil. You need those tools, you need the tools, and this is why I encourage myself and you to atlab al-ilm, to atlab al-ilm, seek knowledge, better, better yourselves. I, I, I can't stress that enough that all of you, my brothers and my sisters, seek knowledge and you can do it in front of your computers yes you can yes you can there is immense amounts of knowledge that has been translated in the various language if you speak Swedish there's Swedish du'at who've called to the book of Allah and the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and translated and you can learn so much if you go back especially to the book of Allah and the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and I should qualify that, that there's no doubt that your level of understanding will be increased if you learn the Arabic language. You're going to have a, a much vast, uh, a, a, a much greater amount of resources. Although I can speak, we can speak in the English language, because that's our first mother tongue, in that in English there are many translated, uh, there's so much material in fiqh, even usul of fiqh nowadays, even qawaid fiqhiyya, you can learn some uh, a soul of the deen and so much in Aqidah and so many books of the Salaf have been translated with explanations of the ulama so you have a vast amount of resources that you can go back to but that's still really not sufficient to really be a caller 
and to really advance yourself and to gain a, 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 a much more, a, a much stronger understanding. That's going to come with, with getting the Arabic language, that tool to help you uh, benefit yourself and uh, to be able to go to the source texts. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.